Hello, and welcome to Lit by Moonlight, where it's not a phase to be so fucking unwell. <laughs> yeah, so unwell. Today we are reviewing HBO's The Last of Us, uh, namely episode three, Long, Long Time. Oh, yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> In this episode, Joel and Ellie are mapping out their path forward after losing Tess at the State House and decide to visit old acquaintances of Joel's, Bill and Frank. We spend the next hour learning about Bill and Frank, how their story begins with Linda Rodstan's long, long time, about their lives together, post-outbreak, and how their story ends. We conclude with Joel and Ellie making it to Bill's compound where both men are now long gone. Bill has left Joel keys to his truck, all of his weapons and supplies, and a car battery. Ellie and Joel drive off into the sunset to the sound of Long Long Time playing on cassette, and no one cried at all. <laughs> Hello, I am Caitlin, and the sun hasn't shown in the sky in over 10 days, and it's a bit concerning. Oh, no, I don't like to hear that. Eh, I don't know uh, where it went. I miss it. Sometimes you get a peek of it for like two minutes, and I go, what? Hey, Mom, what's that big orb in the sky? And she goes, I don't know, honey. We should take shelter. And I go, you're right. You should take shelter. Uh, it's, it's so funny because I'll always remember when you were coming back from my house the other day and you mm-hmm. sent me the picture of, like, sunny over, like, wherever it was, probably Virginia. Yeah. And then, like, once you got home, it was immediately cloudy again. Immediately like, cloudy. The last time I saw the sun was when I was in the sky. Literally. I, that's I'm true. not even kidding. That was the last time I saw the sun, and that was two weeks ago almost wow um <laughs> it's terrifying geez. my i was i called that i was talking to my mom on the phone the other day and she's like yeah i'm not good i was yeah. like why she's like my seasonal depression is through the roof like i have not seen the sun in such a long time i'm Literally. actually scared and my was mom like, was like i feel so tired on the drive home i just want to fall asleep and i'm like well don't do that and she's like well don't do no, that I, I won't do it but like why am i like this and like five minutes later she's like Hey, when's the last time the sun was out? <laughs> and I was That's like, so oh, scary. No. You're I right. Don't like I that. don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have another source snowstorm coming in, so you know, all is oh well. Oh my god, Woo-hoo. that is crazy. Meanwhile, in DC, we are like we have like this is like the longest, the fifth longest time that DC's ever gone without snow. Mm-hmm. Um, but the record is still a ways off in like the end of February, so we could still get snow, but we probably won't. It's so ins- it's so crazy to me. Like, yeah. I don't even, and then when you go home, I don't think I saw the sun once when I was home for Christmas. So, yeah. I mean, that's that's um, the great the great north for you. I mean, the I great... can see the sun shining into your room right now, and I'm kind of like want to go to there. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I hop on a plane real quick. It's it's there's a little bit of light. Yeah, there's a, a teensy weensy bit of light. What's that? Um, <laughs> Whatever Puxatawney Phil might have said this year seems like uh, if he implies that spring was coming, uh, well, he lied. So that man's a liar. A known liar. That man's a liar. <laughs> Do not trust him. Uh, I'm Emberlyn, and I'm not good. <laughs> <laughs> After all that, <laughs> I'm not good. <laughs> I. And why are we I'm not, not good? good? Uh, because of this episode. <laughs> like. I went to last night just hoping for like a good old fashioned Walking Dead style zombie shootout. And when the episode began and Ellie uh, stabbed the infected person in the face, that's what yeah. I thought I was getting. And then that's not what happened. Yeah. <laughs> and I I'm honestly... not complaining, but maybe I need to file a lawsuit. <laughs> I honestly forgot for she had that little deranged moment of just like, stabbing the infected for just for funsies and then everything yeah. else happened <laughs> they really tried yeah. to distract you from that little moment she had huh <laughs> they said because you went you, you watched it you're like oh wait a minute why is she so angry and then that happens and you're like oh wait huh you know yeah. so yeah so uh caitlin mm-hmm. what hooked you for this episode um i really loved at the beginning joel and ellie's conversations together Uh, I love how they can go from just, like, Ellie absolutely ragging on him on how he can't always shoot straight to her asking questions about how the outbreak started and the two of them actually having, like, a good, genuine conversation where Joel, like, tells her about what life was like when it all started. And there was just something about Ellie telling Joel, it makes more sense than monkeys, thanks, to her. Like, just having her, like, try and make sense of this world um, just really got to me in some reason because it really, like... It really hit home that, like, yeah, she has no idea what life was like 
pre outbreak mm-hmm. and the she clearly like doesn't have like the best education in those uh federal military the federal schools <laughs> yeah so and i thought my public school was bad <laughs> yeah so just like having her like ask him questions and for him to just be like yeah here's how it was and for her to just be like that makes way more sense than what i thought and mm. just to like have something just like like all aligned for her i just I, you could like tell in that moment she's just like oh, okay i'm getting my answers like i need that like i think all she yeah. ever wants is answers as to why things are like this and it just must yeah. be like so frustrating to be living in a world and be like i don't know why it ever came out like this <laughs> like right. why did this happen so I, I, I just i love that dynamic uh between the two of them um where they can uh joke and be snarky to each other but also uh have those like more Mm -hmm. intense serious moments so I think they're doing really good with that yeah it's nice because she's never had someone in her life that can be that person for her and now she has Joel like whether she knows it yet or not like because I I feel like I agree with you like watching watching Ellie try to make sense of of the outbreak is so it's sad because it's like it's not far off from I mean it is a little far off because (laughs) we don't have brain eating uh, fungi but like it's yeah. not far off from I think a lot of people's experience during the COVID-19 pandemic of like yeah. maybe having children that they need to explain it to and like maybe years down the line from now we'll look at it with a very different lens but I can just imagine the conversations I could be having with like the young children in my family about mm-hmm. what it was like to live during that time and trying to like put it into perspective and I mean, it makes more sense than bats yeah. <laughs> so, or bat soup or whatever the original yeah. idea was. But um, I, I think that's really interesting. Um, I think that was what really stuck with me, too, just the way that the outbreak is talked about in the beginning and, like, how basic things are taken for granted, like taking planes and cars and tampons. Yeah. yeah. Um, like some things that are either taken for granted or that Ellie has never experienced because she, they, we just they don't live in a world anymore where like transportation is is a reality. So right. so fascinating. Mm-hmm. Um, I think like learning about the mass execute the mass execution of oh people God. was yeah. very scary. Like we saw like a dose of that in the first episode um, with Sarah, but. Um, just to kind of see how that was, to see that the, like, the government response to something like this was to, like, yeah. let people die or kill people that weren't infected was super interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, and, like, I mean, like, the, the, um, transition from, like, the green dress lying in kind of, like, the, the dead, uh, like, the, the kind of the, the cluster of dead folks and, like, mm-hmm. the rainbow baby's blanket to, like, yeah. transition from there to both um the mother and child alive as they're being transported yeah that hurt uh horrifying I, like the um, second of transition i was like oh i don't want to see this happen <laughs> it's terrible. Like, uh-huh. please no uh, yeah but so there was that and then of course the introduction of bail and frank uh, uh that really got me and i'll talk about that more next yep. but mm-hmm. oh <laughs> it's, it's a whole thing uh did you have a favorite quote from this episode well that's kind of i'd say this quote might be my might even be my hook like in all seriousness and that's yeah um nick offerman saying not today you new world order jackboot fucks <laughs> <laughs> that's i mean he was born for this role perfect. it's perfect like, they just like took ron swanson and like i, I don't even want to say kicked him up a couple of notches because i feel like that's not it. like they're both pretty extreme yeah but like it was just like kind of a reprise of that type of character that i really enjoyed there and... were so many moments where i'm like this is just this is literally from parks and rec like when it's he's him. eating when he's just <laughs> eating the meat at the table and he watches like a uh, infected get shot there's literally a scene in parks and rec where he's eating meat at a table and he watches something blow up next to somebody because he, they yeah. were like looking for something on his property and he's just like laughing as he watches it I'm like hello ron swanson <laughs> so funny like oh Walked into that Home Depot and said, "I know more than you." Like- <laughs> I know more than you. Like I, I was so, I was so invested in his character. I can. Um, I have, I have, uh, so I have other lines from later in the episode. Um, and I, I think maybe just because it's crazy to go from talking about this to going 
to like talking about where the direction the episode takes. So yeah. maybe we stop there to talk about this. But um, I mean, we go from learning about this like very like isolated like libertarian type like dude who kind of like hides from Fedra and is able to like turn his entire town into his own little compound Mm -hmm. and just live off of the land um forever and uh that is until he meets Frank who is on his way from the closed down probably just like decimated Baltimore QZ and trying to head to the Boston QZ and he stops uh by falling into one of uh uh Bill's traps and what a good meat cute. I know, like <laughs> just fall into a hole. Hey, literally I'm fell for him. <laughs> yeah, literally, you trapped me. Um, new, so, new Valentine's Day, like I fall, I, I'm falling for you, and it's just Frank in the hole. <laughs> Frank in the hole, yeah. So, and that's how they meet and fall in love and end up having the most unexpected and beautiful love story uh that oh, none of us know. thought was going to happen but did and uh ruined everybody's lives pretty much mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. um do you want to do you want to do you want to say anything about that before i tell you about we talk um, about some of the quotes that really made made this episode yeah so i added some lighthearted ones um just because i knew we were going to get into the ones that really just make us uh just want to eat the drywall in our house yeah 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 so um I really liked when Joel and Ellie came across the plane, like the crashed plane, Ugh. and she's like talking to him. She's like, have you ever been in one of those? And he's just like, yeah, hated it. Like, didn't like it at all. And like basically saying how terrible of a time it was. And she looks at him and she goes, dude, you got to go up in the sky. <laughs> like, there's just something that's so childlike and like yeah. wonderful about that. Like, just the idea of you got to go up in the sky and like, the fact that she's not going to have that yeah. option um because planes just aren't a thing anymore i was was just like oh wow like she never got to experience that like that really sucks um i loved ellie going fuck yeah (laughs) in response to finding tampons i loved that bit so much i like audibly cheered when that happened i was like yeah periods are still a thing in the apocalypse baby (laughs) right like good for her um and just also just her excitement at finding like those deodorant and toilet papers like we love a practical queen yes <laughs> like yes. love that <laughs> with bill and frank when uh bill goes are you armed and frank goes no <laughs> <laughs> and bill goes why did you take so long to answer <laughs> And Frank's like, I don't know. I thought about lying for some reason, but a reason didn't come. Like, that's so funny. So <laughs> Just cute. like the pause of, no. <laughs> yep. Frank was playing the piano, and <laughs> Bill comes up finally and he goes, No, thank you. Sorry. As he puts, like, the, <laughs> tries to put, like, the piano, like, music away and everything because this boy was nervous. <laughs> yeah. Just, yep. uh, there's just something about, No, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> it's like, no, thank so you. So funny to me. <laughs> it's like rejecting customer service that you didn't yeah, ask like, for. Yeah, like, No, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Like, do you need any help today? No, I'm good. Thanks. No, thanks. Sorry. <laughs> no, thank you. Sorry. Um, Joel and Ellie again in the beginning. She's asking him how he got a scar on his forehead, and he says that um, someone shot him and missed, and she thinks that's so cool. And um, she asks if he got the person who shot at him, and he said no. Mm-hmm. And um, he said, I miss too. It happens more often than you think. And she goes, because he suck at shooting or like in general? And he goes, in general. <laughs> like yeah. he's just like me for real for real <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I feel like that was like I'm just thinking of like in the game like all the shots that I missed and I'm like oh, I'm sorry Joel I'm making you look like a stupid head <laughs> you look dumb yeah. you look dumb you're supposed to be good at this and he just goes no I suck and then at the end when they get all uh cleaned up and she goes well don't you look pretty and he goes shut up <laughs> it's just yes the dynamic their vibes. real quick another honorable mention to when they're in the car and ellie says it's like a spaceship because i was like yeah oh, yeah and then i remembered something and i went oh, yeah and that's all i have to say about that so we don't get any spoilers no i know spoil things for people oh man so this is a hint <laughs> for later this is a hint yeah. for later like that's like I, everything you said was lovely because i feel like this was even though they weren't featured a lot in it this was obviously a very strong ellie and joel episode it was like, yeah you got to like 
learn a little bit about their dynamic together and now they have like this is the first time we're kind of seeing them work together now that Tess has sadly passed mm-hmm. so it's like I think it's just really interesting like that now we gotta get to taste it we kind of get a taste of like what their dynamic is going to be like yeah. and it's really nice it's really, um, nice, really nice it's so nice and I love I do agree with you like I think that this show has just through this episode, distinguish itself from other apocalypse and, like, zombie-related shows in a lot of ways. Yeah. But just by acknowledging periods, it went the extra mile. Because, oh, my like, God, I was so happy. That's never a thing. <laughs> like I know. I, I think about that. I was thinking about it right even before the episode started. I was, I don't remember, it was such a funny thing. I was like, oh, God, I wish they'd acknowledge, like, <laughs> what it, like, like, hygiene and, like, what Literally. that feels like. That's why I was so excited. Like, every time Ellie got excited about, she's like, there's hot water, I'm taking a shower, and then she immediately goes for the toilet paper. Joel throws her deodorant, and she's so excited about it. Like, it's fantastic. I remember, like, reading The Hunger Games in middle school and going, but what if Katniss gets her period during the games? Like, how does that work? Yeah. (laughs) Like, that sucks. So just having it acknowledged is just kind of nice. Let's talk about periods. (laughs) Yeah, it's nice. It's nice when that happens. Because it's a Um, normal part of your life. But now zooming into less normal parts of our life, for mm-hmm. example, um, experiencing uh, a completely unexpected love story between uh, two men who find love and hope after the apocalypse, um, that happened. Wow. It sure so, did. <laughs> it sure did. So there's a couple of quotes that I think we both loved that we should talk about now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think... The combination that will be sticking with me forever is when, I guess when Frank plants Bill a patch of strawberries, oh, which, yeah. what the fuck? <laughs> Add that to a list of fruits I need to be emotional about now. <laughs> it's giving, I saw, I saw a, a, a um, meme like comparing the game to, to this scene and it was mm-hmm. like, the first one was like Drake when he like shakes his head and it was like bury your gaze, which is like the classic trope of like killing queer people in games oh, yeah. for the purpose of furthering the plot mm-hmm. versus bury like bury like b-r-r-y your gaze and they have strawberries <laughs> and drake's like nodding and i laughed so hard because i was like yeah that's bury like, your bury gaze, your gaze. Oh, that's more funny. like it in this scene so frank says i like you older older means we're still here <sighs> wow. wow um wow. and and that compared with um Bill's kind of response, I was never afraid before you showed up. Um, because this is, I love this because it's, it's like, <sighs> Bill and Frank are like representations of hope and fear coexisting in hard times. And uh, like just watching them talk like that and then like make out in the strawberries. Good for like, first of all, good yeah. for them. But second of all, like what an incredible I guess, metaphor for life itself, like, to be able to find something like that. I'll I'll talk more about this later, Mm -hmm, but to be mm -hmm. able to find something like that and to be able to coexist, have, like, let your your hope and your fear coexist in a difficult time, like, so precious, so special. Um, Then uh, I'll I'll talk about one more because I don't want to take up too much time, but when uh, Frank says uh, in reply to uh, Bill kind of detesting, basically, letting Frank pass away that night mm-hmm. when Frank uh, gets cancer. Um, he says, then love me the way I want you to. Ha! Like, ah! Ah! Like, oh the my pain. God. The that's, pain. Like, that is the, that's the line. Like, that's the line. Yeah. Like, say it, you know? Um, but you've got more. Tell me. Yeah. So <laughs> the biggest, the biggest one for me that, and like, I was already like, I, I knew where this, well, I say I knew where the story was going in the sense that, like, I knew where it went in the game, and I knew that Frank didn't make it out. Yeah. Um, I love that they changed their entire story. Um, yeah. Completely. I love that they changed both of their endings. Like, and I'll talk more about that when we talk about peaks and valleys. But like, right. I I think it was really wonderful to like, even if you knew the the story already like you still basically went into this episode blind because i had no idea where they were taken like the longer their story went on i was just like first of all entranced because i was so like hooked on their story i'm like wow i can't believe we're getting more i can't believe we're really going into this like i thought i knew they were gonna be in the show but i didn't know how deep we were gonna go like i thought maybe we'd get like flashbacks 
but to right. see their lives played out was so wonderful and um so I was already like emotional just seeing these two like grow to love together and then when uh, when they're at the dinner table and you know Bill has put the pills in the wine and Frank drinks his because that's how he wants to go but Bill does the same thing like he he takes the same wine too with all of the the pills crushed up in it enough to kill a horse yeah. and Frank is like haha what you doing and Bill basically tells him like he's had he's old he's lived his life and um he tells Frank you were my purpose yeah and that line made me start crying so much i was like oh no don't say that what yeah. <laughs> like that uh we talk a lot on this podcast about other ways to say i love you and that is one of them yeah, uh, yeah. and just the just the fact that they got to choose their death in this yeah. apocalypse like it wasn't gruesome it wasn't terrible it wasn't I mean, it was heartbreaking, but it wasn't heartbreaking in the way that, like, one of them was going to grow old without the other. Like, um, earlier, Bill says to Frank, like, I'm sorry, I'm getting older faster than you or something like that. And Mm -hmm. it hurts because then we see Frank is the one who's sick and he's the one who, like, might die. And, like, I don't think Bill ever, like, thought of his life being the one to outlive frank Mm -hmm. so the Mm -hmm. fact that they're like "Mm, no we're gonna do this together was so much (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah it's it's just beautiful like romeo and juliet who you know yeah true true yeah i also think that the distinction of of uh frank being bill's purpose is so incredible to me because how does one even go about having a purpose during really difficult times you know like Mm -hmm. this is a question I think a lot of us are asking ourselves you know in 2023 and I think it was really hopeful that Bill's purpose he found his purpose after the outbreak yeah and that that purpose was to love somebody very deeply Mm -hmm. um and that he had that and that because he had that he was satisfied and he was ready to go when Bill did like when Frank did yeah um uh, I'm like gonna throw up on my fucking keyboard. <laughs> well, before you throw up, on that note, in the letter that Bill left for, well, to whomever, but probably Joel, which is yeah. really hilarious, um, he said, I used to hate the world and I was happy when everyone died, but I was wrong because there was one person worth saving. That's what I did. I saved him, then I protected him. That's why men like you and me are here. We have a job to do, and God help any motherfuckers who stand in our way. <sighs> Wow. Like, I just, to love someone so much where it's just like, I will do anything in my power to keep you from being harmed. Ow! (laughs) And also just, I know that those lines are going to come back to haunt me. And it's true. And also, it's crazy because, like, these are lines that are already haunting Joel, having lost Sarah and then kind of, like, failed tests. It's, like, a reminder for him of all of his failures Mm -hmm. to protect the people in his life that he cares for. Yep. So when that happened, I was like, oh, here we go. And and he has to look at Allie reading these lines, who might be his opportunity to save someone. Yeah. Um, Maybe. So... Yeah. Um, nah. <laughs> so, do you have a song that you would play on the piano to serenade the man you love? Oh, so many songs, truly. Um, it was hard for me to choose one, so I ended up, I actually made a playlist um, I love that. of songs because I literally went to bed last night, like, sobbing and just, like, adding things to Spotify, like, <laughs> <laughs> because I kept finding some, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying I'm going to hyperfixate on this, like, I have with all of the other um, elder gay couples in the media that I love very dearly, but um, I might, and that's why I wrote <laughs> made a playlist. So I don't know. That's all I have to say. I, I have not like I can't choose a song that I yeah. would play to serenade the man I love because there are multiples, and I would just be playing all night into the morning. So yeah. are you going to share me. this playlist with everybody? Oh yeah, I, I'll link it in the description. Um, nice. I, can you imagine if I was like, no, no, <laughs> no I processed this by myself and um, <laughs> now you guys don't get to take part in it. So good luck out there. Uh, How about I'm you? just, 
Um, I just really love that the title of your playlist is I'm Warning Two Men Men I Just Met, which I was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah me too. It was funny because like on my drive home this morning, I'm like, oh, I need to figure out like what song I'm going to use for whatever we end up doing. And then I saw <sighs> that you made a playlist and then I saw that you put Helplessly Hoping in there by um, oh. Crosby, Stills and, Crosby Nash. Stills and Nash. Do you understand what you just did? Because yeah, I know, I know the consequences of my actions. <laughs> I, yeah. I've accepted because those. Ow. Because because absolutely out i was not ready and then i saw that yeah. and i was like oh, okay she oh she's hurting me personally this is cool this is very cool yeah very very i wanted cool. to choose things that i knew would personally hurt caitlin actually the yeah, title yeah, of the yeah. playlist will be modified to i'm running two men that i just met and i'm gonna personally make caitlin hurt for that um <laughs> I love that. i'm going to single her out and make sure that she understands that i'm hurting and that she has to hurt with me otherwise it won't be a proper healing process for me if i don't sounds fair to like co co mourn um that's friendship but, baby uh caitlin do you have a character you would trap in a hole and keep forever from this episode <laughs> first of all i love that <laughs> um, <laughs> i'm putting everybody i love in a hole and they will still there <laughs> um, yeah uh frank 100 percent uh i'm still in absolute awe over how they developed his character and bills for that matter uh, from the game into something so much better and way more compelling uh, to meet characters fall in love with them and become so attached that you're sobbing over them by the time they leave you and it's all in one episode yeah incredible writing this show has such good writing yeah <laughs> like i um i i can't emphasize that enough i think not only are they it's not even that they're staying faithful to the game it's the fact that they're just expanding this world and it's not a story about an outbreak and the infected and a pandemic and all that is not about that at all. It's about the characters and their relationships with each other. Yeah. Despite everything and because of the circumstances that they're in. Like, honestly, yeah. the pandemic is just a backdrop to this. Right, right. And I love that. And I love character driven stories. So just be able to have, um, a whole like have your third episode be about two characters that you just meet and to for it to be basically like this beautiful incredible short film about love yeah. is, in an apocalypse it's so amazing and i'm just i'm so pleased i'm so pleased with everything that they're doing with this show i i like i was hoping it would be good i was excited when it was good and i just can't believe how good this is yeah. Like, I feel like I haven't said that about a show in a long time. Like I always find some flaws, but Yeah. I mean, 3 episodes in, I'm floored. <laughs> it's so once, good. What I'm noticing is this pattern of like once an episode they give us a character that we fall in love with them, they take them away <laughs> like yeah. immediately. Yeah. Like this is the third time this has happened. Last third week we time. talked about this. I was like, "Wow, they did it again." And then this week they said, "Let's do it one more time." <laughs> with two people. <laughs> with two people. Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I so <laughs> it rude. If that's how they expanded Bill and Frank, I'm so eager to see what else they expand as the story move fo moves forward. And by yeah. eager, I mean excited. And by excited, I mean also terrified. Yeah. 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 I, I'm i scared. I'm scared for all the loss I'm about to experience. Like, yeah. I wasn't expecting to lose anybody in my life this year. And yet HBO has already killed off four people that I actually really deeply cared about. Yeah. That's sound parasocial, but, like, thanks. Um, they, <laughs> they really, they, they made it parasocial for me. They said, yeah, they said, no, you, you're supposed to like these guys. And I was like, sure. And they were like, well, guess what? They're all dead. And I was like, oh, okay. Cool. Um, I also love Frank and I love Ray Bartlett as an actor mm -hmm. so much. He really slayed in this. And I want to, I'm not going to like, I don't want to make too many comparisons because I don't want to be reductive to like each individual actor's contribution to the world. Mm -hmm. But I think it's really funny how there's just a pattern emerging of like, a very emotional, soft man falling in love with, like, a more, like, hardened man. And then um, that man, the softer one, consequentially, has a show that he's also in where he goes on a fucking journey. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, I, so... If I, had be... two, if I had a nickel <laughs> every time. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, Ray Bartlett... 
Like, so, okay, so I watched I watched White Lotus first, and Mary Bartlett plays Armand, and for those of you who've watched White Lotus, no spoilers, but for those of you who've watched it, you know this man goes on a fucking journey, <laughs> um, which is not dissimilar to, like, what happens to Reese Darby's character in Wrecked. Um, yeah. So, and then for that character to go on and play, like, a really soft person mm-hmm. um, who's deeply in love with this, like, kind of, like, moon to his son I thought that was really funny I was yeah. like like when I was watching White Lotus I was like wow this would be so funny if like Marie Bartlett went on to play like a really like uh soft lovely character and like a queer romance and there he is. <laughs> I was like that's so weird um Murray Bartlett like, and Reese Darby are in a very specific genre <laughs> a very specific genre and it's like like how <laughs> it's just like it's so funny but yeah I'm obsessed with this man I think he's I just think he's neat um his paintings and his entrance into Bill's oh, life yeah um are just so special to me like his ability to kind of like showcase his emotions and try to foster community post-apocalypse are so special to me because they they act as like foils to Bill's like need to be like introverted and isolated and not trust mm-hmm. anybody um Frank really ruined everything for me and Bill's character was incredible like such an unexpected amazing character I think back to the fact that like uh in relation to Reese Darby Con O'Neill was supposed to play Bill originally yeah and I just I think that's lovely but I also just couldn't picture him in this role because yeah when you see when you see Nick Offerman in this role you're like oh that's him yeah <laughs> that's, I think I that's think the guy Nick Offerman is perfect it's yeah he's perfect for this role I I can't picture anybody else playing him yeah incredible and I think it's also nice to see like uh I I feel like it's it's nice to see queer people like existing in spaces post-apocalypse like Mm -hmm. I don't know why but like I think given like the AIDS crisis and like so many impossible hardships that um like we face daily in our country on account of being queer it's just really nice to see two queer queer people survive and thrive after everybody else is like you know essentially eradicated by yeah pandemic. that's why i feel like the um the i like you old but means that we're still here line mm-hmm. so much because like these are two characters who went through the aids crisis yeah and they survived yeah. that and now they're going through an apocalypse and they're surviving that and they essentially mm take themselves out on their own terms after living a satisfying life together like yeah you can't ask for much more in an apocalyptic se- setting i think yeah <laughs> so. and it's it, it's awesome because it's it just goes to show this episode is not just about like resilience and hard times it's also about the resilience of queer love which is yeah. like awesome so <laughs> thanks thank you thank you um, for, the last thanks for that um <laughs> and also queer death where like each character has some agency and autonomy. I mean, yes. cancer obviously is not autonomous, but, like, there's some agents. They Each character had agency in choosing um, how they wanted to die as opposed mm-hmm. to, like, a bury your gaze type theme where it kind of furthers the plot um, that they're yep. dead. So I really like that. Thank mm-hmm. you for that, um, <laughs> HBO, I guess. Um, you do it like nobody else. Uh, <laughs> so, Caitlin, uh, what was your first peak? about the show we're talking about peaks and valleys now peaks and valleys uh well again uh we're talking a lot about bill and frank for obvious reasons in this episode because this is their episode give the men emmys i mean come on but again i just i love that they took a character like with bill who right. was just there to add some like in the game he was just kind of there to add some more interaction uh be a jerk and uh just help them get a battery <laughs> Um, and mm-hmm. he tagged along for some, like, you know, infected encounters for, like, eh, like half an hour. Um, and then Frank, who was nothing but um, someone who wrote a letter that was very mean-spirited to Bill. And mm-hmm. we only meet when he's dead already. He essentially was just talked about and not at all, like, present in the game at all. And there was, like, mm-hmm. very, very subtle hints as to what their relationship might have been like, which could have been easily looked over, but it was literally just, like, yeah, he was my partner. And that that was kind of it. Um, but they took that and were like, now we're going to make them in love 
and have this whole story and you're going to see it. And they created the most beautiful and heart-wrenching short film about two people finding love in the apocalypse and having Mm -hmm. the ability to choose a peaceful death, death after life, well lived. And I just think that's incredible. I know I'm repeating myself, but I just can't believe how lovely of a story this was in like an hour. (laughs) It was was just so good. And I know you have more to say about that, so I'm excited. Yeah, I I mean, I everything you said I agree with. Like I can't believe that they did. I can't believe they've done this. Like I can't believe they've done this. <laughs> I can't yeah. believe they've done this. Like there was there was there were so many directions they could have taken like the the Bill and Frank storyline in. Um yeah. and they chose the best one, I think. They did. Um, if there was such a thing. No, watching it um like, so I, I watched it with uh, my dad, my brother, and my brother's girlfriend, and we were all, uh, um, my dad, brother, and I <clears throat> all know the story of the game. So we're all like, oh, well, we know where this is going to end, or oh, we know where Joel and Ellie are going to show up. We figured it would be like, oh, like, Frank's going to die, but it's just he's not going to have the same exact death as the game, but that he's going to die anyway, but Bill's still going to live. But it, it wasn't like that at all. So for all of us to, again for everybody who played the game to be in the same boat as people who had it and everyone just to get that surprise of you have no idea where this is going and you're mm-hmm. gonna cry it was just it was really nice to get that three episodes in so yeah ah <laughs> and i think the choice to put something like that three episodes in is like a very intentional and thoughtful one um yeah i'll, I'll talk about that in a second but i just i reaffirming everything that you said i uh I feel like they took they took the game and they elevated that storyline in a way that it was so satisfying and sad, yeah. but yeah. satisfying all the same. I think their storyline was definitely my first peak as well. Um, yeah, they paired together so well. Where you got like Nick Offerman's character, it's like very dark and brooding, and then you have one the other, which is literally Murray Bartlett, like so <laughs> lovely. Um, and they had great chemistry um, to showcase their relationship from start to finish. Uh, to show life after the apocalypse sustaining Mm -hmm. and then the way it ends it's so fleeting and beautiful and yet hopeful and I really want to like I guess zoom in on that last point um because I've been reading a lot lately completely by accident about hope and resilience during difficult times and this Mm -hmm. episode happened to come out the day after I finished one book that encapsulates that sentiment called sea of tranquility um, mm-hmm. by Emily St. John and started another along the same realm called The Light We Carry by Michelle Obama. And all I can say is that I think is really meaningful for a show that is built on cynicism about society, essentially, as like a lot of apocalyptic literature is, um, or is like supposed to be built on cynicism about society, because I would argue that The Last of Us actually isn't. But mm-hmm. that, you know, like The Walking Dead, um, Zombieland, a lot of these shows, um, it, they're meant to showcase... Um, you know, what life could look like after an apocalypse. But this show does a great job of showcasing that people are capable, showcasing that people are capable of living, not just surviving during hard times. Mm -hmm. And there are layers to this, of course. Like, it goes without saying that people who will be able to continue to live and not just survive or probably have um, a lot more resources to do so, um, more so than others. And yet, I find myself really sitting with the choice to share this story line after the fact because I think it's really special especially to show two elderly queer men experiencing Mm -hmm. this two men that as we've been talking about have spent a lot of their lives having to practice resilience um in the face of injustice and systemic um oppression it's really like awesome (laughs) (laughs) so I like I I inputted like a bunch of quotes that I just read but I'm not gonna read them because they're so long I just want you to know that (laughs) I'll probably, like, I'll put them in the episode notes just so you get a sense of where I'm coming from. But Mm -hmm. in the final scene of the episode, we see the window open as Bill and Frank leave it and Joel and Ellie driving off through the window. Um, And I love that because it's, like, that hope that Bill and Frank carry is able to fly out the window and go with them. Um, And that's how we're introduced to this idea that maybe, like, Ellie is, like, a signal of hope, I feel like, for the society that... um, no longer, I guess, like, for for the, what remains of society post-outbreak. So, yeah, yeah, I just, help, 
<laughs> yeah. Help me. Yeah, um, the window really got me. <laughs> really, really. Like, I don't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. That, that was going to be the thing that really messed me up. But today yeah. I can't stop thinking about it. Um, Crying about strawberries and open windows, baby. Yeah, my two favorite television devices. I wanted to say literary, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it might as well be. Um, because this read like a fan fiction. Caitlin, what was your second peak? Well, obviously, like I said, the focus is very much on Bill and Frank, as it should be. But I just love to say that once again, I appreciated all the dialogue that came from the game between Joel and Ellie. Um, it They opened and closed this episode but there was just so much that they were able to fit in and yeah. not feel like it was crammed at all like I, I i can't believe this i can't believe this episode started with joel and ellie on their own post test and uh-huh. then had the whole bill and frank storyline and then we end again with joel and ellie getting the car battery they're in the car on their way like it it never once felt like anything was rushed it didn't feel right. like oh my god this episode is an ending it just it, it flowed so perfectly which again i just have to just give all the praise to the writing on this show and the storyboarding because it's just so well done um yeah so even though this episode really wasn't about them we got like you said before so much um between them and their bonding um really loved them getting their outfits from the game that was a really cool touch on how they got that uh the yeah. entire car scene was adorable with just Ellie getting so excited, absolutely touching everything she can in the car because she's never been <laughs> in one before. Um, yeah. Really, again, just as again, as you mentioned before, just emphasizes the things we take for granted now that like Ellie never got to have uh, mm-hmm. in her life because uh, she was never driven in the car before. So she yeah. was all excited. Um, so and that just really made me excited for the next episode and everything after that um, to see them bond and have more one-on-one time with ellie and joel together yeah i love that we, we get that and i love that they now have a truck so they don't have to travel on foot i feel like that would have been <laughs> just like i'm i would not be looking forward to that to just no. like persistent walking across the united states uh yeah, I'd, I'd probably die <laughs> mass execution graves like no i'm so good thanks I'm i'd rather just good. like lie here and maybe die and like become an infected person um but thanks what's your second peak uh, i'd say and this might be congl- like a conglomerate that goes in with my first peak, but I think mm-hmm. that the in- the choice to introduce hope mm-hmm. so early on mm-hmm. in the show um, shows that this show does like a really good job of distinguishing itself from other apocalyptic fiction. Yeah, because I think that something that I don't care for when it comes to some apocalyptic fiction is this idea that like, oh, like everything is so gosh darn awful that like. Mm-hmm. We, none of us can have a purpose after bad things happen. And like that does not contribute well to the a psyche, the psyche in like a post COVID world, not post COVID, mm-hmm. but like COVID post, post outbreak world for us. <laughs> yeah. Because like, you know, when you go through difficult times, like I think a lot of us in this country are going through right now, it's kind of hard to find purpose again after that happens. It's kind of hard mm-hmm. to re, I think, to like, reposition yourself to look at things with like an air of like positivity i think it's really easy to get cynical i know i'm super guilty of that i i know pretty much everything in my life is so (laughs) to see two people be able to kind of like i don't know just like find purpose after that is so i i just can't emphasize enough how important it is i think yeah so I guess my where I, I make the dis, the distinction in my first peak that that's special, and the second peak I want to emphasize how special that is for us in yeah. 2023 post COVID outbreak um, to be able to experience that. And I think I think we do have like an obsession with apocalyptic fiction that stems from the need to believe that things are bleak and that we can't save ourselves. But I also think that it's essential to be able to cling to things that are good and and cling to purpose. So I really appreciated the way that this, this episode illustrated one's ability to do that. So that's mine. I just, I really like, it was a great, I really read that as like a message of like, I guess fear and hope coexisting. Um, And I really appreciated that. So because they can and they should. Uh, Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't just be like fear and cynicism that guides us in really difficult times. So I really appreciated that. Well, do you have any valleys in this episode? (laughs) 
Not to like uh, take things super cynical after talking about hope, but like, <laughs> what did you not? Everything. What did you like? <laughs> this is all about hope. What did you hate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so remember last week when I said, "Yeah, I'm glad I played the game, so I know exactly what happens, and I don't have to feel stressed out every Sunday." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had no I idea do. what to expect and uh, how they would yeah. do the story, and it wasn't at all what I expected, and I love it. But also, they played the song Vanishing Grace before I was anywhere at all prepared for it. So thanks a lot to the music <laughs> editor for the placement of that. You will be getting my therapy bill in the mail. Yeah, right in the mail. Yeah. Right in the mail. Right in the mail. Yeah, right in the mail. Right in the mail. So um, again, it's no valley, but. <laughs> no valley, but. Um, What's your valley? My valley is in 10th grade, I read a BBC Sherlock fan fiction <laughs> where one of them dies of cancer. And I don't remember the specifics, but Craig and Neil, I know y'all read it. Don't deny it. Don't deny it. I know y'all read it. Don't, don't, shh. Don't deny it. I know. I know Alone on the Water when I see it. Oh my God. That's what it was. I was fucking there, Craig and Neil. I was there. And I know y'all were too. So don't. Enough. (laughs) Like, the memories I, yeah. he just dug up for me. Uh, yeah. I I That's read it on it. the school's computer and printed it out on the school's computer. Oh, I think yeah. I wasted like 60 pages of our music I, teacher's printer allocation I distinctly for the remember year. you standing by the printer and I'm like, <laughs> what, are you, what are you printing out? And you're like, nothing. <laughs> Listen, my parents are poor and they wouldn't let me print like 60 pages on the printer. Justifiably so. But I was going to get that thing. I was going to get that thing for my consumption. So, oh, my yeah. God. That's, couldn't read it on fanfiction.net like the rest of us. My I parents wouldn't out. let me have my phone past 9 p.m. <laughs> at night because they're weird. So this was my this was my last resort was, was to read it the old-fashioned way, book style. Like a, the lengths you've gone. Like, like fucking Ben Franklin. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, no. Lovely. I don't fucking know that storyline when I see it. Craig and Neil, you can't fool me. <laughs> you can't fool me. I was in the trenches, so I was, <laughs> you just don't, can't lie. Um, Caitlin, <laughs> yeah. what thing are you saddest that Joel and Ellie missed because of the apocalypse this week? Um, This week, I'm really sad that they never got to experience the, whoa, yeah, transitions from Hannah Montana. God, you're right. I just feel like that. It would have made some of their life, their like parts of their lives, a little bit easier if they just had that going through their head. <laughs> Bill and <laughs> so Frank we... die of cancer. Whoa, 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 whoa yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would have made it so much easier. Somebody Good. make an edit with that, please. <laughs> please. Oh my god. Tag us in it. That'd be so funny. I I don't even think. I think that would be the thing that kills me. To be quite honest with you, um, <clears throat> that might be. I... That'd be it. Sometimes I don't always know what to wear for the day, so I go through a couple outfit changes, and that's what plays in my head. It's like or, a, it's a transitional go, sound. I'm Hannah Montana. <laughs> it's definitely a transitional sound. You know, it it's is. like it's like 2003. Uh, Joel loses Sarah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoa, it's 2023 now. Yeah, like I don't. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Um, uh, what are you sad that they missed out on? Uh, my best friend wrote "What Up Foot Truck" in my tenth grade <laughs> yearbook, and the thought of that never happening is like kind of tragic to me. Like, uh, what an icon! For I don't know if Joel and Ellie would have heard about it personally, but it just—I uh, think Ellie is someone who would call someone a fuck truck. So. Totes. I um, agree. I think if she never knew of the phrase. Uh, it would be a loss, and it is a loss since she didn't get to learn the phrase. So what up, fuck truck? Yeah, that shit's <laughs> that's a banger, honestly. Like it is. I've been thinking about that for like great. three weeks now. So. Same. Ever since we read it. <laughs> Ever since we read it, we were going through our yearbook, so we found that. I yeah, the thought of that not happening. That's like I never that is. You, and I hope you have a terrible summer. <laughs> she also wrote that. Yeah, she also wrote that, and um. And I somehow we're still so together. I love that <laughs> woman with my whole entire heart. <laughs> I think we should take this opportunity to say that another thing that, so this girl, this is my friend Kara. This is our friend Kara. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the other thing that Joel and Allie would have missed is the great fish debauchery of 20. 20- <laughs> 
18. Was it 20? Um, yeah, yeah, we were in college. <laughs> yeah, which is where Kara, our friend, bought a bunch of fishes, like kept buying fish and trying to maintain this tank with her dad. Mm-hmm. Um, and they just all kept dying and she couldn't figure out why. And she just kept cleaning them and taking them to different <laughs> pet stores and like fish <laughs> consultants trying to like figure out why the fish kept dying and they just kept yeah. dying. And she, she had like fish tanks all over the house at one point and mm-hmm. it was so scary. And then yesterday she texted me and said, I think I'm going to buy a fish. <laughs> and I was asleep, so I didn't call her back. And then by the yeah. time I did, she she got into the phone and she said, "It's too late." Yeah, she she bought that fish. Such and a <laughs> if your friend buys a fish, you need to get them help. <laughs> yeah, uh, I I couldn't intervene quick because I got into the group chat. I was like, "Hey, bud, what's going on?" And by the time I could even send that, she sent the the picture of the fish. Yeah, and. <laughs> She it's goes, my late. house is in shambles, my car is cluttered, and I have a fish now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She recently got h- obsessed with Tom Cruise. Like, she's obsessed <laughs> with him now. She watched Top Gun, like, so many times. She's and, watching it now as we speak. Yeah, she's literally watching it, and she's hyper fixating on him. She's like, I'm like, I was like, oh, you should watch this movie then by him, blah, blah, blah. You know, knowing what we know about Tom Cruise. She texts yeah. me the other day, she goes, I just found out that Tom Cruise is a terrible person. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Uh Yeah, she's like, she's like, well, I'm gonna choose to ignore it and go back to what I was doing. (laughs) So anyway, it's kind of on Top Gun for the eighth time today. No, 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 the tape. Yeah, so that's I'm kind of sad that Joel and Ellie missed that because the great fish debauchery of 2018 and her current hyperfixation on Tom Cruise just they're not things that it's it's it'd be cruel if those things didn't happen in our timeline. It's cruel that not everybody in this world knows Kara because she's a delight. She's she is a specimen. I'll say that. (laughs) Caitlin was scalped one to five times uh, that Frank and Bill made us throw up blood uh, mm. crying about them. Uh, how only would five. you rate episode yeah, only five? But <laughs> yeah, if 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 um if there was a limitation, I'm going to say that the limitation is five, but we both know okay. it's been more oh. than that. Yeah. How do you rate episode three? Five out of five. Again, straight bangers from The Last of Us HBO. Oh my God. This story is not about the infected. It's about hope, baby. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I can't, I can't. There, I, no flaws have been found in the show yet Mm-mm. at all for me. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm having yeah. a great time. I'm crying a lot. Yeah. And it's been good. It's been good. So far, so good. Um, <laughs> I'm going to agree with you. I think this episode was definitely a five out of five. This is my mm-hmm. favorite episode yet this season. Um, I plan to live in this episode. I plan to spend my whole life in Frank yeah. and Bill's uh, little compound. Um, I think that if I think that I think that if I knew that I was going to get like a full on fan fiction, like not even a fan fiction. I don't want to say a fan fiction because it it was real to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like. Uh, it's not even fan fiction. I, it happened in the show. It's canon. It, it happened. Not even. It happened in my real life that I'm oh, living. Yeah, yeah. I've decided. Like, there's some place where these two men are happily eating, eating um, meats together in their home with electricity yeah. and their hot showers. So, um, happy for them. But yeah, five out of five. Beautiful episode. I'm not. I'm not good. Okay. <laughs> I'm not good. This one is really unwell. <laughs> I'm not good. Yeah. So uh, that's that's this episode. Yeah, what I a good time. It. I can't believe that <laughs> happened. I don't know what to tell you. Um, but I will tell you this. I am no more uh, terrified than I was last week because when you hear the name of the next episode, you're going to shit your pants. Thank you for listening to Lit by Moonlight. Tune in next week when we review episode four of The Last of Us. Please hold my hand. No, that's the name of it? I sure wish it wasn't. I what sure, the, no. I wish it was something ah. cool like zombies! Exclamation point. <laughs> Please hold my hand. What the? Listen, I don't ever watch the trailers for the next week. I don't I yeah. don't want to see it until next week. I, I'm, I'm like that for everything, but especially this show because... I already know the story. I don't want to know what you're going to change up next week. I don't want to know what I'm about to see next week, even though I already know. Uh, please hold my hand. What the? F- no. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. No. 
I wish it was called the Great Fish Tobacco of 2018, but alas. <laughs> I would. It's fucking not. Um, <laughs> oh, what the hell? I, uh, yeah. I wish we yeah. could go back to the Great Fish Tobacco of 2018. Those were simpler times. They were simpler times. <laughs> they were simpler times. About as many casualties, I'd say, during the Great Fish Debacle of 2018 as there were in this uh, fungal, fungal outbreak in The Last yeah. of Us. Definitely controversial. Yeah, stay tuned next week when we update you on the Great Fish Debacle of 2023 when we see if this fish has lasted a week. <laughs> yep, yep. Well, we'll let you know then. <laughs> Best Bye. wishes, warmest regards. <sighs>